Hey what's up guys, Bryce here and we're back at it again for another video and in this video I will be showing you how you can take really beautiful screenshots in iRacing and make them look like this. I do use Photoshop for this but the effects that I'll be using you can pretty much find in any other free software like Paint or any simple software. I'm not doing anything crazy but um, less is more so I'll be showing you just small things you can do especially to get the camera right and the just the right settings you need. Um, to make your life a lot easier because it is pretty complicated in iRacing. So let's get right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is you need to go find your iRacing app INI. &I. So it should be in documents and then iRacing. And the reason for this is because in order to take screenshots, high quality ones, you want to set your monitor resolution. So go in the app INI &I, and then you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will see um, here in the XX dev use only you have the height and the width you're going to put the height of the monitor and the width of the not the monitor the width of your resolution so whether it be 1080p 4k i have a 4k monitor so i'm doing 2160 by 3840 and then just the resolution of my monitor and that's how you get um good looking screenshots and then go to file and then save that out and then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, launch the replay that you want to take a screenshot from now, as you can see, I've loaded into my iRacing and I will show you my settings that I have for the uh, replay. You can copy them here. They're all pretty much high depending on your PC, but I try to have these all pretty high. The most important thing for getting really nice screenshots is the motion blur. It looks a lot better when you have the motion blur in high strength. So make sure you have that on and everything else. Um, try to have it as high as you possibly can without losing uh, too many frames when you are um, taking the screenshot. So what I usually do is have a obviously a replay file where you have a few laps of you going around the track and then just find a spot where you actually want to uh, take your screenshot. So for me, so right around here I like this and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press control and then 12 and what that'll do is that'll open up the camera controls here. Now the WASD keys you can use to move the camera around like this and it'll orbit around this group here but if you change this aim type to car it will orbit around the car and that is what you want and then with this orbiting tool and if you zoom out a little bit you can basically choose where you want to move the car so i personally like to take screenshots very realistically as if there was a photographer on the track so i'm going to go right over here on this little stand here so i'm going to zoom in and then in order to go down I click the Z right here and I'll move the camera down I think there's a keybind for it. I'm not sure what it is but I usually just click this into to go down and then I'll move forward a little bit with the W key just like this go down a little bit and then now we are in a good place over here go down to vanish Y and X you can move the camera left and then point it up and down so I'll find where the car is in the center then with the zoom I can use the zoom to zoom in like this the car is pretty blurry all you have to do to fix that is go back a frame and forward and it'll auto focus on the car and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the aperture now that will make the background either more blurry or you can have it more sharp so if I put this to f1 look how blurry the background is if I change it to F32, it's not so blurry. So I personally like more of a blurry background. I'll go for F2 and it makes the background more blurry, but you kind of have to be careful because you'll get a little fuzziness around the car and you know, you kind of have to fool around with this to get what you personally like. 3.3 looks very nice. And then I'll mess around with um, the movement or the controls of the camera. And that is pretty much your screenshot right there. Now, in order to save this, screenshot I'll be taking two of them and editing two screenshots you can really see what I'm doing but in order to save this you are going to press Control shift and print screen and that will bring up this window right here now this is your iRacing directory and you're going to go to screenshots and I mean you can save it wherever you want but I save it in screenshots and then I'll call it Lambo Canada screenshot one so this is the first screenshot and I'll press save and the reason why we change the monitor resolution is because when you press save it'll render it in whatever resolution you have it set. So I believe if you have 1080p monitor you can render it in 4k. I'm not exactly sure that works but when you see the iRacing watermark in the bottom right hand corner then that means that it is finished so it is currently rendering this out. So it just finished 
and that is your screenshot now what we can do is we can go around the track and try to find another uh, spot for a screenshot so let's see uh, if we can find a cool looking spot for a screenshot so I actually had a pretty cool idea of placing the car right here on this curb and kind of having a nice cool top view with the curb so that's what we're gonna try to recreate here so again we're gonna raise the camera up with this Z um, not sure if this is gonna work the way we want it to but we will attempt this and we're gonna use the vanish X and the vanish Y like we talked about before to kind of position the car in the center and then we will use the static FOV but I usually turn it to zoom and then you can see there we're gonna move once up uh, up a frame and there you go that is your another screenshot and you can kind of move the camera around to get what you want we can go a little bit higher kind of like a helicopter there go up a frame like that and look at that that is pretty nice and then we can change the aperture once again um we have the manual focus. i don't know why this is turned on but manual focus is turned off there we go and then we can go up a frame just like that and that is another cool screenshot with the red in the back as well kind of to match with the car and that's a cool overhead screenshot same thing as before control shift f12 and then control shift print screen actually and then screenshots and then we'll call this lambo canada 2 Got two and then it saves as a tga file this is a photoshop file i forgot to mention this but you can also save this as all files i guess that would be a png i never tried that but tga is like a photoshop file so you can edit this in photoshop but again if you don't have photoshop it should work with paint and uh any other free program so while this renders out i'm going to open up photoshop and i will see you in photoshop and in case any of you were wondering where you find this is the same place we got the i and i documents i racing and then screenshots and they're both here in a tga file so here we have our screenshots we have the second one we took and the first one let's work on this first one first um in photoshop i go to filter and camera raw, raw filter in photoshop i use the camera raw filter i don't do too much just because iRacing makes the game look pretty realistic already. You don't need to do anything crazy to it. It doesn't have a look to it. It has a pretty realistic look to it. So the screenshots already look very good, but you can just do just a little bit more to just make it pop. iRacing usually has a tendency to be a little bit warm. So I'll bring the temperature down just the slightest bit. You know, even just a minus three or minus five can do a lot. You don't need to go crazy with this because again, um, less is more. So we're gonna bring sound to uh, minus four and then what we're going to do is we are going to bring the blacks down because if you see at zero the tires don't look completely black and i kind of want them just to be um, a little bit darker but this also will change the car so you kind of have to be um, a little bit careful of this and then bring the whites up a little bit and usually you kind of have to fool around with this depending on the image that you're working on so the settings i'm using use these for your image but again uh be careful depending uh what the lighting is in your picture and then we're going to bring the shadows down a little bit and we're going to increase the contrast a slight see bring may bring the exposure up a slight bit um the vibrance we're going to bring the vibrance up just a little bit vibrance can make the colors pop more which always looks nice and then we are going to go down to curves and i usually add just a little bit of a just a little bit of an S curve, nothing really crazy, just something slight. Same thing here, a little bit of that curve there. I will go down to effects and add a vignette around the outside, just a little bit. And you know, that's pretty much it. Like you can do a lot with this, but already that looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Just fool around this to see what you like best and that's something very basic you can do we'll press ok and that is a good looking screenshot you can also go to adjustments and add just a simple brightness and contrast 
as well as just simple curves and uh, other things here. So that's also very cool. And yeah, that is a pretty nice screenshot already um, right off the bat. You can add other things to it if you want to make it like a thumbnail, but that's kind of for a whole nother tutorial. This is just a basic screenshot. And if you're not using this for YouTube, you could always crop this down just a little bit and maybe crop it in from the corner like that. And you can just make it more simplified, whatever, you know, uh, your preferences or taste is. But that is a pretty nice looking screenshot for the next one. This one is a little bit different. As you can see the lighting, it's a bit more uh, washed out, not as much color in it and uh, contrast. So we can do a little bit more. The temperature is perfectly fine, I think. So we don't need to mess around with that. But I'll definitely increase the blacks a lot on this. Or we can even do the shadows instead. Make the shadows darker, the blacks, increase the whites a little bit. You can increase the clarity just a bit because you can see it'll make things a lot more uh, just a little bit more defined we can increase the contrast the exposure just a slight and the same thing we did with the curves just a little s curve like that and then we can go down to the vignette and add a little vignette around the outside it's very simple very simple things you can do but it'll go a long way and you have the first screenshot here and the uh, second one here. And if you want, say if this area is a little bit too bright or down here, create a new layer, go to the paintbrush tool and then just black there, black there and put that on overlay, lower the opacity and you can make kind of this centerpiece uh, pop and I'll show you a little technique you can also do kind of to make the car stand out a bit more so here in basic what we are going to do is we are going to add a radial filter to the car itself so just make a filter like this whoops make a filter like this and then rotate it like this and then as you can see whatever we do will be just on the car so now I can increase things but it'll just be increased to the car itself. So I can add more contrast to the car. I can add saturation to the car. Um, let's see what I can do. I can raise the highlights just a little bit. Maybe I can, you know, just do different things to see what works best. And let's bring down the shadows a little bit. and the saturation again just fool around with what works and then we will okay those changes and there you go let me find the before picture so that is that is the before and that is the after again ivory sing already looks pretty good but if you want to make it a little bit more eye candy you can use those effects that I just shown and that is pretty nice in my opinion and here's the second one as well and this is very basic things I'm no professional photographer so pretty basic things you can add that's the before and that's the after so I think it looks pretty good thumbnails is a whole different story for YouTube because you really have to make those a little bit more colorful which is one of my favorite things to do but you can use this to make some cool um, wallpaper screenshots whatever you like so Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like down below and uh, I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.